Hello and welcome to Prophecy Files. I'm Pastor Joey Rogers. Glad that you've joined us for this installment of Prophecy Files. I hope that you will find this lesson and this episode of Prophecy Files to be enlightening to you concerning the events that are taking place around our world and especially in light of the fact of the imminent return of Jesus Christ. I know that many uh, perhaps don't have that in their mind or in their thoughts, but I can assure you that Jesus Christ is coming again, and the signs of the time are very revealing. And that's what we do here on Prophecy Files, to help you stay up to date and ready for the next great event on the calendar of God. One of the greatest questions that I've heard lately is, when is this going to be over? This, And they're specifically talking about the virus, the coronavirus, and the, the fear of all of that. When is it going to end? Well, I've got to bring you a little bit into some history in order to help you understand when it's going to end, when the situations that we're in right now are going to come to uh, its fullness, and it's found in the Scripture. But first, I want to share with you a little bit of history that helps us to understand what we're going to see in the future. The question I got to pose is, how could it have happened? How could a uh, extremely intelligent people, uh, the German people at the time, embrace the propaganda, the evil, the demonic of a man who would rise in power, first in the chancellorship, and then ultimate authority over all of the German people? and then buy in to what would be the social media of the time, the propaganda machine that would let them know that the future under Adolf Hitler would be uh, a utopia. It would be an incredible experience. And he would express in his mastering of manipulation to the masses uh, how that the economy that had been destroyed in World War I would be able to come back under his rulership and he went to the degree, of course, of the spiritual influences that would come. In 1920, just prior to that, he was uh, in obscurity, not really anyone to be heard of. And then by the 20s, early 20s, he began this influence of the masses in such a degree that people began to listen to him. And out of that became the Nazi party or those that were uh, ready to follow after his propaganda machine. By the time that he had gained full power, and authority. His influence uh, was taking off to such a degree that uh, he was talking about how he would recover the economy and how that he would take the spiritual renewal of Germany back to its pinnacle uh, as it was before World War I. And so in this very short period of time, Adolf Hitler rose in power with an evil intent and heart that was absolutely from hell that actually produced hardened hearts in the people that listened to him and were influenced by him until the extermination of the Jews and other rebels, for that matter, would be eliminated and it would be applauded by the masses and the approval of all those that would listen to Adolf Hitler. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, this man, Adolf Hitler, was a man who uh, was only a small picture of the forthcoming evil of what the Bible describes as the man of sin, the Antichrist. Now, this is very important. And there is much that is said in the book of Daniel, much that is said by the prophets, as well as the book of Revelation concerning this rise of the man of sin out of a sea of people, out of obscurity to a place of absolute world domination. This is what is being prepared for in the times that we're in under the situation of coronavirus and how that the world has been completely turned upside down by the coronavirus and has been influenced by those that have been making, of course, decisions concerning the future and whether we should keep things shuttered or open. All this control mechanism and the underlying currents of many other things that are unseen uh, by people in society as people are trying to just simply focus upon uh, making ends meet and getting the next paycheck. And and now as things are starting to open back up about their uh, entertainment and the weekend, and I can tell you that in most many hearts, I should say, uh, God is not in their forethought. Party atmosphere in many, uh, lot, not only in the United States, but in many nations around the world is the forethought of the day. One of the things that I see, of course, as an evident sign 
of the uh, entrance of the Antichrist, but prior to that taking place, the church's disappearance in the rapture and the coming of Jesus Christ in the clouds is the entrance and the subtlety, and you're seeing it in the news, of the introduction of a cashless society. One article dealing with coming soon, the end of paper money. And in this article, the coronavirus will accelerate, according to this writer, the adoption of state-sponsored cryptocurrency and the elimination of paper currency. The advocates, this article says, for a national cryptocurrency says that the the payment process could be faster if every citizen would buy into this as a digital wallet and the government could simply deposit the cryptocurrency with the push of a button But the aft, in the aftermath even of the coronavirus, and many people are already pushing that. It was even introduced into the thoughts of the recent uh, payroll protection plan, uh, the PPP that was outlined uh, from Congress. Uh, Think about this. If you think in your mind that that many people are going to oppose this idea, uh, you're sadly mistaken in the time that we're in because all of the technology and all the things necessary to adopt a system that is as quick and as easy as a digital wallet, my friend, the government would only have to simply launch the campaign to collect your digital wallet and that we would incentivize that by depositing X number of dollars into your account, just like they've already done. Uh, and then people could take immediate action off of that. I can assure you it will be embraced by the masses. Now, why and how is this leading to the Antichrist. Well, in Revelation 13, the Bible clearly tells us that there would come a time, and I truly believe that we are already in that position, where cryptocurrency or what is identified as the mark of the beast would be uh, would come into fruition. And it shouldn't surprise those of us who read the Bible and who are uh, up to date in Bible prophecy. If you have any working knowledge of the, of the book of Revelation at all, you understand Revelation 13 lets us know that there will be a global dictator, which is not hard to understand of someone rising in that position. Even calls are being made today for someone to take the leadership. Uh, and that is that global dictator's process will be the introduction of a mark in the right hand or in the forehead, his mark. And the Bible clearly states in verse 17 that no one will be able to buy or sell anything unless they have this mark. How will it work? Well, it is, of course, yet to be seen exactly. Some people have speculated on barcodes and QR codes and all that. That's really kind of irrelevant in light of the fact that the technology is already here and that a government-sponsored cryptocurrency has already been introduced into the minds of people. Now, what does that all mean? It means that we are very quickly, and as the question is asked, when is it going to end? We are very quickly moving to the time of the introduction of these systems and the uh, dictatorship of a one-world leader that we would know in the Bible as the Antichrist. Now, the fast, quick approaching of all of this was certainly timed out by the prophets in the word of God, and they have warned us over and over again. It would be only our own ignorance that would keep us at a place where we would ignore the signs and the sounds of the times that we're living in right now. In the midst, the Bible says, of a, even a global pandemic, this Antichrist person is going to rise. Luke 21, 11 says, uh, one of the other signs necessary for the last days to be uh, revealed and the Antichrist to be revealed is that Israel would be back in their land. That's already been done. We just passed by once again another anniversary of the state of Israel's establishment in the land. Jeremiah 23 tells us about that and Luke 21, 24 through 28. And one of the greatest signs of Matthew 24, 14 is what's been happening recently in the fact that we, uh, the churches all around have been shuttered, the doors closed, and many of them, like ours, have now begun to open up. But as a result of that, the gospel being preached around the world is a fulfillment of Bible prophecy, and it's been happening on a scale that has been unprecedented through the internet and social media platforms. All of this is pointing toward the end of days and the last days, when the Antichrist the followed by the tribulation period and global government, all of that is rising to take its position and a falling away of believers certainly taking place. 
I'm amazed that, that in the middle of all of this worldwide pandemic, that the hearts of mankind are still pushing the evil and the uh, removal even of God from the thoughts of man in light of this global pandemic. That sin is pushing forward without any kind of hindrance or resistance with no thought of God. These are the conditions that are described by the prophets in the Bible concerning the last days. In fact, listen to this passage of scripture now. I want you to stay close with me because in Romans chapter 1, verse 28, the Bible says that in these last days, that even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Listen to verse 29, being filled with all unrighteousness, then he goes into this list of what it's going to look like. Unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignancy, whisperings, backbiters, verse 30 says, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, uh, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, verse 32 says, who knowing the judgment of God, it's not that people are ignorant of things coming to a head, verse 32 says that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only to do the same, but notice this last line, to have pleasure in them that do them. And that's very important because the terminology here that is being used by the apostle Paul in Romans is the fullness of things. I want you to keep that in your mind. One other passage of scripture that the Bible records, of course, that you've heard me mention before from Jesus in Matthew 24, that the comparison of the last days would be that uh, of the days of Noah and the days of Lot. But interesting enough, listen in verse number 36 of Matthew 24, but of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. And then Jesus says, but as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be when the coming of the Son of Man shall be. For as the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. In other words, everything was happening just like it always had been with the ramping up of just pleasure seeking and doing whatever anybody wanted to do. Verse 39 says, and Jesus speaking, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. They didn't have any thought of the flood coming Uh, or judgment coming, they ignored it, and they mocked Noah preaching this. And Jesus says, so shall it be the coming of the Son of Man. The Bible says that no man knows the hour but the Father in heaven. No man knows what? No man knows the limit of God's mercy when sin will have run its full course. So do we see those conditionings today? Do we see the the events, the environment of Noah's day today? Well, I believe we do. I believe we see it uh, just like it was in the days of Noah. But here's another passage of scripture that caught my eye that really is what set today's prophecy files in motion. Daniel 8, verse 23 says this. It says in verse 23, and in the latter time of their kingdom, Daniel is prophesying the last days and the last kingdom of the Antichrist that would come. This is the line, when the transgressors are come to the full. Please note that line. Then he goes on to say, a king of fierce countenance, and this is describing the Antichrist, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark saying shall stand up and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper in practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. Speaking of the Jews. And through his policy also, he shall cause craft or witchcraft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in the in his heart. And by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, which is Jesus Christ, but he shall be broken without hand. And the vision of the evening, Daniel says in the morning, which was told is true. And then the scripture says, shut up this vision, for it shall be for many days or for the last days. It was so overwhelming for Daniel to receive this prophecy that the Bible says that he became sick over the next few days and fainted 
underneath the vision that he saw. It was so incredible, so uh, awesome, and so uh, chilling as well. Now, when is it, and this is the question that I posed to you at the beginning that people are saying, when is this thing going to be over with? Well, I don't see this being over. I see this being the continuum of things until Jesus returns. If it's not coronavirus, it will be something else. The point is this, and this is found in this passage of scripture in verse 23. The question has to be asked, when have we reached the point of no return? When have we reached the limit of God's mercy? Well, the Bible tells us very clearly right here, when the Antichrist is going to come on the scene, prior to that will be the return of Jesus Christ, and and this will be the days of the culmination or the climaxing of the days of Noah returned in our time. And the verse of Scripture in verse 23 of Daniel 8 holds the key to this when it says, when the transgressors or sinners are come to the full. Another translation of that is, Uh, when rebels have become completely wicked. Another one says, when they have become morally rotten. Another one says, and this is from the Jewish Bible, when the evildoers have become as evil as possible. When the transgressors have run their course, when they are come to the full, when the transgressors have reached their limit, then the Antichrist comes on the scene. He will appear. Now, this prophetic passage of Daniel 8, verse 23, lets us know that sin actually has a limit with God. And it is when mankind's conscience becomes so seared to such a degree that man has no more sensitivity to sin that he does whatever he wants to, just before the coming or the entrance, I should say, of the Antichrist, Jesus Christ is going to appear. In the clouds of glory, the Bible tells us, and the church will be raptured off of this planet. Now, it's then that righteousness is removed in the form of the church, the bride of Christ, off of this earth, and God is going to spare the judgment or the wrath of God, uh, the Bible says, that church is going to be uh, spared the wrath of God's judgment during the tribulation period. So what is happening prior to that? is that sin will have run its course prior to the rapture, prior to the entrance of the Antichrist, uh, prior to the coming of Jesus Christ, that sudden disappearance of the church, sin will have run its course with God and his mercy until the transgression is full. What does that look like? When mankind can no longer tell the difference between right and wrong, when the hearts of man become so darkened and so wicked that man will have reached the point when laws have been passed and sin will have been taken hold of so much that man becomes incapable of discerning light from darkness. This is the limit of the transgressor and the point of no return with God. Only God knows that moment. But is there anything that can reveal or can uh, that can show us when we have reached that limit. Well, Jesus describes it. He says it will be as it was in the days of Noah and Lot. Well, the question is, how dark does darkness have to get before he returns? Well, I believe, and I could just pose this question to you, do you see the parallels between Noah and Lot's day and the time that we're living in right now? Are we already there? I believe we are. I believe that God alone, of course, knows the uh, day and hour, but I also understand, according to 1 Thessalonians 5, that we are to know, according to the Apostle Paul, we are to know the times and the seasons. Listen to 1 Thessalonians 5. But of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. And when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, now please notice this, ye, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light. He's talking to the church. He's talking to believers. And the children of the day, 
We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us, who are of the day, be sober, putting on that breastplate of faith and love for an helmet and a hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. What a powerful promise that is for the church. My friends, it's important for us to open our eyes right now because I believe in, in what I see in the scripture and what we're hearing from the prophet, specifically the prophet Daniel, talking about the times we're in right now, that the transgressor, uh, the, the fullness, the limits of the transgression and sin ha, are, is quickly approaching the time when God is going to suddenly make a change. Just as sudden as this global pandemic came upon us, it will be faster than that, that Jesus Christ will return in the clouds. Question is, are you ready for that? It's not a question of how long is this going to be? When is it going to end? The question is, when is it going to begin when Jesus returns in the clouds? I encourage you to get ready, be ready and stay ready. Because in an hour that we think not in this world, the Son of Man is going to come. I believe we're right there. Let's stay ready. Pray for one another and urgently and with passion reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And now that the church doors are beginning to be open all around our country, don't forsake the assembling of yourself together as the manner of some is, but the Bible says so much the more as you see the day approaching. I encourage you to share this out with all of your friends because this word today is going to help them see just how close we are to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And until we get together again, just like this around God's word here on Prophecy Files, remember Jesus Christ is coming soon.